Good morning. Today we are going to prepare an input file for this model, which is a composite steel concrete slab. The dimensions of the slab are 9 meters in this direction and 15 meters in this direction. We have a concrete slab, which is representing a Kofra 60 composite steel deck on which we have concrete and we have a thickness of 90 millimeters above the steel ribs. Here we have two steel beams which are unprotected IPE 500 and the concrete slab is supposed to work in a full composite action with the steel beams. We have prepared beforehand a section for the IPE 500. Here you can see the section and Safir has computed the temperatures as well as the torsion properties. Here is the section which is representing the concrete slab, the composite slab in fact. We have 90 millimeters of structural concrete, below which we have 23 millimeters of concrete which is representing the ribs of the composite section. I won't enter here into the details of how we computed this equivalent thickness of protective concrete. This is supposed to be standard procedure in Safir. Here I will concentrate on the commands used for GM Safir. And in GM Safir we start at this stage where in the model we have defined four points here, four points here, which allowed to create four long lines in this direction and three lines here plus three lines here. And very important, we have created three plane surfaces that you can see here from their normals and the normals are pointing upward, which is guaranteed by the order in which the lines are created. This has been explained previously. Why do we need three surfaces? This is to make the steel beams coherent with the concrete slab. If we represent the concrete slab by one single surface, the surface would be meshed, the beams would be meshed, but the beams would not touch the concrete slab. They would deflect separately one from the other. So the geometry has been defined by the elementary entities. We just have to enter into the physical groups and we first add curves and the first curve will be called short supports and here are the lines which belong to the short supports type E the properties are essentially block constraints. I block the displacement in the vertical direction, Z, and the rotation in the Y direction. Add update. I create another physical group made of curves, and I will call this group long supports. This physical group is made of two lines, type E, and the block constraints are again in the vertical direction, but now along the y-axis for the rotation. I finish the supports by adding a point physical group, which I call point support. It will be made of this single point type E and the constraints are now for this point in the X direction, in the Y direction and rotation with respect to the vertical direction. This point support is to fix the rigid body modes which were not fixed by the line supports. And I can view here the lines are blocked and the point is blocked as well. I can now add 
physical groups made of curves. I will call this physical group by the name beams and it is made of these two lines type E. Now I have all properties to allocate to these two lines. I start for example by the new local axis definition and it will be described by the location of the y-axis. I want to have it vertical, that will be 0, 0, 1. And I will call it LAX, this will be a single one. Add update. So it has been created, not yet allocated. I will also create material for the beam and that will be a load bearing material carbon steel probably steel ec3 the yield strength 355 and i call this material steel ec3 so the material has been created now i can add the beam section type here I give the name of the TEM file that's IPE 500.tem and I give the material name that's steel EC3 that has been created another property is the local axis to that physical group and there's only one that's the one which I called LAX so now it is allocated so I think we are okay with the beam if I view the material I see the name of the TEM and the name of the material which has been allocated and I can also view the local axis here and I see the y-axis is pointing upward. Now I will create the physical group for the concrete slab and this is surface. I will call it slab and it is made, the group is made of these three surfaces type E. Now I need a new material definition for the matrix of the slab. This will be concrete. Why not this one? Silco ETC 2D. That's, I checked that this is a 2D material. Compressive strength, maybe a little bit of tensile strength. And maybe we want to increase a little bit the ductility parameter, considering the fact that we have rebars here. And this material will be called concrete M. Now a new rebar material definition. This will be carbon steel but not steel EC3, probably steel EC2. And I will call this material steel EC2. Add update. Now the properties are the loads on the shell will be multiplied by the function F load and this will be a negative value of minus 6575 Newton per square meter. Add update. I need the mass on the shell and that will be 600. 58 per square meters. I have to give the name of the shell material that was concrete M. I have to give here the name of the file and the file was cofra60.tsh and I have to give 
the thickness is the thickness of the structural part of the slab. And these are 90 millimeters. Add update. I have to give now the shell rebars. And for the material name, that's steel EC2. The section will be 0 decimal 0, 0, 0, 400 square meters per meter. That means 400 square millimeters per meter. The level would be 0, at mid-level of the structural part. And for the normal, I will be defining now the bars which are parallel to the y-axis. So the normal would be parallel to the x-axis, for example. So that would be 1, 0, 0. But this defines only one layer of rebars. How do I introduce the second layer? That's very easy. In each of these boxes, I introduce the property for the second rebar layer, separated by at least one blank character. I introduced here three blank characters. And this will be steel EC2, the same. I assume that the quantity of steel is the same. And for the angle, I will make it perpendicular to the previous layer. So this will be 0, 0, 0. And if I have four layers of rebars, I would have four chains of characters here, four values here, and four values in each of these boxes. I forgot here to give the position of the second layer. I will assume it is at the same position as the first one for simplicity. Add update. And I can check probably here now the materials. I have the materials of the beam, but also the TSH name, the thickness, and the material name of the slab. Check the loads. OK, they have been allocated to all three surfaces. I can check the mass. That's OK. Clear. OK, now going to the mesh, I have to prepare a little bit the work. So, for example, I will transfinite the curves. And for first, I will start with these four lines. I want to have 20 finite elements along the length of the slab. So 20 elements make 21 points. And I can allocate this property to these four lines. Type E. Now, on each of these lines, I want to have five finite elements. So this will be six points, and this will be allocated to these six lines. Type E and Q. I also have to transfinite the surfaces. So transfinite surface. I select this one. And I have to say that I have difficulties to select the other surfaces. I don't know exactly why. I will try to type E. And maybe now select this one, type E. And select this one, type E. And we will see the effect, if this is correct or not. I think now everything is ready to start the mesh. So we click on Mesh 2D, which will mesh the slabs and also the beams. If we click Mesh 2D, this will mesh the 2D and the 1D objects. So this is the mesh. Yes, it has been transfinite correctly, the three surfaces. I want to recombine 2D because I don't want to have triangular elements, but rectangular elements. And if I view the materials to improve the mesh visibility, I see that I have a very regular, very structured mesh with the elements I needed. Good. So I have prepared the parameters here. It's a structural 3D, some comments, the name of the input file. We consider a maximum displacement of one meter. 
precision is 2 minus 3. I have two points of goals along the length of the beam, of the beam elements. Time print, I will only run the simulation during one second and print at the end, because these are quite long simulations. Here, very important, I need NG shell thick, and I put the maximum value, 9. I will do a dynamic calculation with approach newton raphson with a comeback to 1, 10, minus 5. OK, let's start with a time step of 1, maximum value of 1, and the simulation will finish if we have 1 second. Simulation will not converge after 1 second, but we have activated the comeback. And let's try now to create the input file. It's done. So we can come here and try to launch the simulation. And indeed, it did not converge after the first simulation, but I have the comeback, which is working now in Saphir 22, or sorry, after the first time step, if it does not converge. Yes, we have convergence and Safir has adapted the time step to finish just exactly at one second, which is the last time I want it. I can open Diamond and watch my file. Here it is. Here are the nodes. Here is the mesh. Here are the elements. And let's go directly to the displacements, which seem to make sense. After one second of simulation, we have a deflection of 11 millimeters. Thank you very much.